Okay, folks, I want to welcome you to uh, today's video. I actually tried to start this video probably about 20 minutes ago, but I have various people pulling up, blasting loud music from the tricycles. So I think hopefully now it's got calmed down enough where you can hear me. Coming to you from the Philippines, just off of Subic Bay, nestled up to these mountains here, Zambales province, just off of the Matain River. I'm on the Subic side of Barrio Barreto if you're just now joining me for the first time. So there's going to be some background noise. I'm sitting out here on the balcony of the penthouse suite overlooking the vibrant Times Square. It's going to be a long video. This may very well make the, uh, the battery on this big camera go low bat. In other words, I might run the battery out. That's how long I'm going to talk. Because it's an important subject to a lot of people who are thinking about moving here. People who have girlfriends in other countries. Thinking about getting a girlfriend in another country or getting married, I should say. To a girl outside of your home country, having kids, etc. So it's going to be long. There's going to be some background noise, chickens, roosters, dogs barking, tricycles. Welcome to the Philippines. Now the reason I couldn't start the video 20 minutes ago because somebody pulled up with some loud music. And if you're not familiar, if you have music in the background of your video, YouTube will scan that, pick it up. If there's a copyright, uh, you know, if it's copyrighted music, they just take your money. So you basically are doing the video for free. Uh, so the only reason I'll stop this video is if a trike pulls up blasting some music. Other than that, please deal with the background music. Not the music, the background noise because hey, welcome to the Philippines. I did a video several weeks ago called I'm at a crossroads. If you haven't watched that video, maybe you want to stop this one now. Go down to the description and click that link and watch that video. I was in the, I was in the U.S. I was, uh, you know, just sort of down in the dumps. Things weren't, things didn't really go my way in the States as I had predicted. Well, not predicted. I can't say prediction because when, when you go off on certain adventures, certain uh, exploring certain opportunities, whether it be business or, you know, going on a date with the girl, you never know what's going to happen. You have your idea of what's going to happen. You're hoping that, you know, a thing will go your way. But there's no fucking guarantees. you got to get out there and roll the dice. I didn't go to America on vacation. I didn't abandon my kids over here during this lockdown. Um, despite what all the, the haters and the trolls want to want to comment on and say. I went there to handle some business. I went there to explore some business opportunities and you know see my family and the positive part of that trip was I did get to see my family I did get to take a little road trip across America my home country and just see how things have changed because it's been many years since I've been there the, uh, the business end of it you no, know, it didn't work out in my favor. That damn dog. Fucker barks and barks and barks and barks. For no fucking reason. Absolutely no reason. I like dogs just as much as the, as the next guy, but that damn dog down there is becoming a nuisance. Anyhow, yeah. So things things didn't go. I don't want again. I don't want to say as expected. I went out. I went out on a on a risk that I had to take. The juice was worth the squeeze. If it went down, shit didn't go my way. Had shit had things went my way, I would have been working for a while. And when I say working, let's just leave it at that. I wouldn't have not been here in the Philippines. I would have been outside, um, 
the Philippines, either in the U.S. or other countries, working. I should say that. But it didn't work out. So when, when I figured out it wasn't going to work out, there's no reason for me to hang out in the U.S. I went to my family reunion. I saw my family, you know, toured 20-something states, kicked it in Nashville with my old man. Everything was checked off. When I, when I figured out that business uh, deal was not going through, okay, no big deal. Um, that's the risk you take. It didn't go, but at that point it was time for me, to, let, let me get back to my family. And I sit there and, and you, you start realizing, well, it's not that easy. You know, the, these visa, uh, you know, the regulations about the visa and these travel bans and these lockdowns and everything. It's not just easy, you know, to just go jump on a plane and come back the next day. Because had there been no, no travel ban or anything like that and free to travel like I normally am, like we all are in the normal world, if you can even use that word normal anymore, you know, once I figured out things weren't gonna go, I just got on the next plane out. I just told everybody bye, hey, you know, great to see everybody, got on the next plane out. Been right back on this balcony with my family, my babies. That wasn't the case. So I had all this stuff trying to, I, you know, it was time to leave, time to get back, but I had all this stuff trying to navigate this, this paperwork mess to get the visa figuring out can I get back, when I can get back. You know, had uh, got thrown out of a fucking bar because I was getting rowdy. Well, I got thrown out of a bar and a restaurant for drinking and partying. It was like all my rowdy friends had settled down. It was like the good times were really over for good in America. It just missing my babies I'm, I was I ain't gonna lie I was fucking down in the dumps I don't use the word depressed cause I don't fucking get depressed but at the moment you know you can tell by the video I was not my chipper self you can say a lot of things about me here on this channel but um, mostly everything I do here is fucking authentic I tell you what I, uh, what I think I say what I think. I show you my good, my good times, my bad times, my good side, my bad side. Because in life, especially in the West, everybody's so goddamn fake, and I don't like that. You know, you have your, you have your face and your suit, your clothes and your attitude that you put on when you go out into the world. Then you come back home, strip that off, cuss at the fucking TV get drunk and, and watch midget porn at night. It's like most people in the West, I think they're, was it Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? Why can't we just be our fucking selves, you know? I fucking drink too much, I cuss, I fucking sleep with way too many women. Um, what else? <laughs> Anyhow, moving right along. So we did that video. And I think I'm about to start reading from the comments. Got like 800 and something comments. And folks, I read, I can't say every one because there may be a couple more that have, that have come through. But I read 99.9% .9 of those comments. And I learned a lot from your comments. I don't know what he's saying. Usually when they come around these days, it's something about the lockdown, you know, like like they're telling us something we don't know. Yeah, so so I read all these comments, and I guess what I was thinking was like like one of the questions I was saying, you know, the crossroads is, you know, do I raise my children here in the Philippines or do I raise my children in the West or somewhere else? 
And at the time, I think in my mind frame, all I was thinking of, you know, these kids are fucking locked down. If they leave the house, they have a goddamn mask and a face shield. I'm like, what, what kind of life is that? And, you know, they're saying that there's no school until there's a vaccine. It's like all these factors were going through my head. And I'm like, how in the hell can they have any type of life in the Philippines? I got to get them the hell out of there. And that's just what I was thinking when I laid down that video, you know. Because in America, you guys were never locked down, trust me. Maybe in New York, but you don't, you don't know lockdown, okay? You don't know what a fucking, the word lockdown is. I assure you here, we, we know. But you know, I'm sitting there thinking, you know, Forrest G can't even leave the house. Maria Mercedes can't leave the house. If they were in America, at least they can leave the fucking house. Um, they can go to Walmart, they can go to a restaurant. Maybe they're in a state where you gotta wear a mask like an idiot, what, whatever. But you see, you see where I'm getting at. So anyhow, the comments came into this video. And I guess I was thinking that there would be a majority that say either... I, I don't know what... I, I was thinking there would be a majority on one side or the other. I really didn't think that it would be split sort of right down the middle. And when I say right down the middle, half, half of you guys are saying, get them the hell out of there. And you're giving your reasons. And you're giving valid reasons to... To, you know, if you have children here in this country or other countries like the Philippines, get them out, get them to the West for this reason, this reason, this reason. And then the other half are saying, hell no, don't bring your kids back to the U.S., man, because of this reason, this reason, this reason. And so it wasn't just, uh, you know, crazy comments coming across. You, you've got valid arguments on both sides of the, of the fence about where to raise kids. And people are providing their own experiences. I realize people can make shit up, but if you read them, uh, I think a lot of them, most of them are sincere. And that's what I'm about to go through. And then you got the 10% of the shitheads out there, you know, with, with their bullshit. But even some of the shitheads, even though they were like cutting deep and being shitheads, like some people, man, they were playing devil's advocate. And in any situation, like me and my buddy, j Dog. We game every scenario, situation. We play devil's advocate with each other. So, for example, you know, if I say, hey man, I'm thinking about moving here, or I'm thinking about buying this, okay, these are my reasons why I want to, want to, want to do it. Well, he's going to come back and give me all the reasons why I shouldn't just to play devil's advocate, not because he's a fucking pessimist. We're both very optimistic, cautious optimist, op optimist at times, um, analytical optimist at times. But the way we play this game is we devil, we, we play devil's advocate. We uh, we red sell it, so to speak. We we just go all around instead of just saying, "Oh yeah, man, that's a great idea. Just fucking do it." So we'll. We'll go down all the negative roads why you shouldn't, and, and at the end, then we'll say, okay, well, this is probably the best course, right? And so if shit don't go your way, it's not because we didn't bring it up. Because it, if a friend just goes along, if somebody just goes along with everything you throw out there, they're not really helping you. You know, as a leader or, um, you know, if I'm in charge, if I'm a leader, if I'm asking you for your opinion truthfully, I don't want you to kiss my ass and agree with me. I want you to, I want you to game this and figure out some reasons why, why how things could go bad, why you shouldn't do this. And what's the old saying? If everybody's thinking alike, then somebody's not thinking. Who said that? Was it Eisenhower? Anyhow, so to the comments. I learned a lot from those comments, folks, and I read, like like I said, 99% of them. And I'm going to sit here and I'm going to start reading comments. And again, if you uh, if you didn't listen to me at the beginning of the video, this is going to be a long video. It may not be for you. It may not be for you. And you can feel free to give it a thumbs down or a nasty comment that it's too long or whatever. But I guarantee you that this video is for at least one person out there. And they will learn something from the video, and that's why I'm doing it. 
Um, so, so here we go. Now, YouTube sorts these comments. You know, if you click on sort, it'll say top comments or newest first. I, I guess it's set on mine for top comments. I kind of like the chronological, but we, we'll just leave it on top comments. Um, all right, so here, here's a general comment, right? You have hit the wall. A question that every man worth his salt has had to think about. Deep down, you already know the answer. Whatever you decide is going to be the right decision because you, you will never have anyone to compare it to because you didn't go down that road. Enjoy life, enjoy the kids, enjoy absolutely everything you can this life has to offer because we don't know when life will stop giving. All right. That's, uh, that's general philosophy. And that's like the top comment. I guess there's uh, 62 thumbs up on that. And so that just kind of sets, sets the tone right there. That's good advice. I mean, what do I say? Life is short. Life is short. Um, life is about a series of adventures. And number three, never turn down an adventure. Maybe to you that's cliche and it's stating the obvious, but a lot of people lose track of the fact that we're all going to die and they lose track of the fact that you don't know when it's coming most of us don't know when it's coming and number three most people don't plan on dying um, so so moving right along um, now again we're, we're talking about should should you raise your kids here in the Philippines or outside the Philippines you know if your children are uh, like mine they're half Filipino, half American. I call them Phil Am for short here. All right. So Edward says, I own a bar in Cebu. It's my boat because I enjoy it and it costs me money. If you come to the Philippines to make money, you're nuts. Okay, if you check out a video I did a couple years ago, it's, what, what did it say? Open a bar, a hotel, or a pig farm. Let me help you choose which hole to throw your money down. This gentleman's making a valid point. The old saying is, you make your money in the West, you spend it in the East. Now let's move along because another gentleman is about to cover a, a flip side of that coin. But but let's let's get real. Most people who come to Southeast Asia and places like this and open a bar, they never make a dime. They lose all their money. They end up going home. Ask any bar owner here. This guy is a bar owner. He's telling you, if you're coming here to make money, you're nuts. Just like the old saying, how do you make a million dollars in Southeast Asia? You show up there with five million dollars. Or how do, you, how do you leave Southeast Asia with a million dollars? You go there with five million dollars. Okay, this is from Faves, Favs, I think it's Faves. I said a few weeks ago this was a lost soul. Go back to your wife and children and you will find meaning again. All right, this is from Mark. I'm sitting here in my office Sunday morning with my seven-year-old son who has his own desk across from me and thinking, would I change anything right now? Philippines has been good for me, my family, and most of all, how it has afforded me the time, the time I have to be able to put in raising my son. Okay, so this gentleman's in the Philippines. And he just brought up a very good point about time. And, and I'll hold that until the end, of the end of the comment here. Okay, he attends one of the better private schools here and speaks two languages fluently as a seven-year-old, as a seven-year-old can, plus a little bit of Korean. His education is better than a public school in the States by far, in my opinion. Raised five kids in the States to know a little about, uh, a little what I'm talking about. Live in a gated communi community which allows my son to go outside and ride bikes, play sports, and swim every day if he wants. The point being, and most important for me, is I have the time living here in the PI to be part of that every day. If I was living in the U.S., I think it would be much harder and certainly cost a hell of a lot more. Priorities change, and mine certainly did when I had, child later, had a child later in life. I missed so much when my older children were growing up 
as I was growing up the same time they were. Not the case this time around, and making the decision to stay here in the PI for me was a good one. One thing which will have unquestionable benefits for him is I made sure that he was made an official U.S. citizen right after birth. It will open many doors for him and highly suggest all foreigners living here do the same thing. I guess what I want to get across to you, Marcos, and you mentioned it in your video is, your wife sent you a picture of Forrest staring out the window wishing he could be outside. I think maybe he was wishing his dad would come home. Whatever your decision is on where to live, make it as a unit together. You can't go wrong with Forrest G sitting on your shoulders. Now folks, that comment right there, and I want to say thanks to uh, to Mark down in, let's see, what? I don't think, I'm not sure where you're at here in the Philippines, Mark, but thank you very much for that comment, my friend, because that brought me back, I, I was starting to lose sight of the benefits of what you just described. And when that comment came across, I said, wait a minute, man, this, this gentleman hit the nail right on the head that I don't think anybody's going to be able to argue is the word time. In the West, we don't have time. We don't have time because we're either spending two hours a day in our cars, we're working 70 hours a week, uh, we're mowing the grass on Saturdays. Families don't have time to, to spend together like they do here. It's just a different dynamic. And I wholeheartedly certainly agree with you. If we went back to the States, I would not have the time to spend with my kids. And, you know, it sounds like, uh, I'm not sure what kind of business, what, you know, what, what you're doing, but there's so many things that you can do online that you can work outside your home country. And you can be sitting there with your seven-year-old son with his own little desk right next to you, still learning business, and you're right there with him. But the flip, the, the other point that he made is private school. The public schools here in this country, um, it's not the way to go. Now you could say, well, the public schools in America is not the way to go. Maybe that's just being Captain Obvious. But the, the positive is the private schools here are very reasonable and they're very affordable compared to anything in the West. So I, I think out of, out of all the comments, I mean, this, this right here is top, probably the top three overall comments and, and the argument for staying in the Philippines. Time, being able to be spent with your kids, um, private schools, and the cost of private schools. And a good point, you know, as long as you get your kid the citizenship, he still has that opportunity. All right, so moving right, right along, and I'll throw in some drama in there. People love drama, right? This is from Phil. Let's see, without the alcohol, partying, king lifestyle, your channel will be dead overnight. Uh, that's debatable, my friend. Okay, booze doesn't help, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely agree when you're trying to make important decisions about, you know, in life. All right, Crossroads is, is a part of life, brother. It's a beautiful part of life where you understand what matters. Get your ass back to the Philippines and hug your little boy and girl. It doesn't matter where you are. Family will get you through. I hope God gives you the peace you're searching for. Go get you a breath of some of that fresh Dixie air and carry on. Head up, chin up, beer, no beer. Good luck, bud. Remember, life is good and you ain't taking a dirt nap anytime soon <laughs> all right thank you very much uh let's see dallas dustin okay this is from mark my goodness this has been my exact thought pro process my friend i've milled it over and over and over 
I'm nine years in the Philippines. I've got a son who's almost three. My daughter will be two in February. My wife and I have had this conversation so many times I've lost count. Okay, my software company does very well. We don't need to stay in the Philippines. About a year ago, we made the decision that we're moving to the big island of Hawaii. It's basically in the middle between us, East Coast, and the Philippines. Oh, but, sorry, between the U.S. East Coast and the Philippines. My wife's visa approval was in March, but then everything shut down here. Our kids are already both U.S. citizens. We want to leave, we're ready, but we're locked down and can't go anywhere. So we wait. But while I wait, I keep coding, doing my work, building a better product. We have a huge lot so our kids can still go outside and play. When we move to the big island, the plan is to buy at least one acre of land. Homesteading is my new plan. My wife has been preparing herself for homeschooling the kids. She's already got her teacher's credentials here in the Philippines, but she is spending, now, spending time now researching the types of curriculums available to us. Mark, your videos have helped me laugh and keep things in perspective lately. Being locked down like this was never in my plans. It's insane. But thanks for helping to keep a smile on my face. God bless you, buddy. Man, thanks for, thank you very much um, for that comment, man. You know, and, and just like you said, I mean, a lot of us, we mill over this, right? We, we do mill over it because there's no clear-cut answer. And she's, uh, she's showing me Forrest G. He just went to sleep. He's going to sleep early for his nap today for some reason. Got up early, been playing. We were out here on the balcony playing. But for some reason, he's taking an early nap. So this, this is an issue that we as uh, expats, foreign fathers, whatever label you want to put on us, we, we do mill over this. Uh, so folks, this gentleman, he's going to uh, Hawaii. So sort of, uh, you got the benefits of the U.S., but you're removed from the U.S. You know, you go to Hawaii or Alaska, yeah, you're still in the U.S. Or Guam for that matter, but, but you're not in the U.S. You're in a totally different situation. So I understand, I understand uh, your reason about going to Hawaii. And maybe that is like the perfect middle ground. Not geographically speaking, but well, I guess both geographically speaking and uh, sort of the best of both worlds, maybe. But folks, for most of us, Hawaii is not an option because, you know, Hawaii is expensive. So, man, uh, congratulations to you on, uh, you know, on, on at least coming to that decision and you have the means to do it. and. Maybe you're still here locked down, brother. I don't know. Maybe your wife could, could get out now. I'm not sure on the, the regulations for the allowing people to exit the country now. Maybe you're already sitting in Hawaii. If you are, man, I uh, hope you're doing well over there. So let's move to the next comment. But there was one, one comment in there. Let's see. Maybe I forgot one on the previous. All right, well, let's move along. I have a wife and a child. I have a wife and her child in the PI. I plan to move there and put our daughter in private school. Well, I'm a recently retired public school teacher and I do not recommend you bringing them here for their education unless you want them to be indoctrinated into everything you have a spouse to dislike. Your biggest obstacle is the fact that you're dealing with two moms. Um, I'm talking about my obstacles here. Money goes a lot farther in Southeast Asia than it does here, and travel to and from the USA is prohibitively expensive. Good luck with your decision. Okay, this is from Jay. Man, excellent, valid points. Um, so folks, what Jay plans to do is move to the PI. It's gonna put his little girl in private school. And this is coming from a retired school teacher. Jay brings up some great points. Public schools in America, 
they are. They're indoctrinating our kids into this, into this, uh, I have no idea what to even refer to it as. And so it's no longer just learning. It's an indoctrination, just like he said, which I guess most of us aren't going to, we don't agree with that. You know, if you're sitting here listening to my voice, you're part of the crew that doesn't agree with, with that indoctrination. That's why we're here. That's why we left the U.S. That's why you're planning on leaving America. That's why you're trying to get the hell out of the West. So that's a very good point. I mean, we have to, we have to just sit back and say, well, public school in America is not an option. Unless you're, you know... I would say way the hell out somewhere, but the school system is the school system. What's your alternative? You send them to private school? Most of us can't afford that shit in the States. What's your alternative? Homeschool them. Now, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, I would have said, you know, I was against homeschooling. Not because you can't teach them the skills or you know how to do math or things like that but what school basically taught me was how to interact with other people conflict resolution um, you know how certain groups are formed you know basically those social skills I wasn't really learning anything intellectually um, I'm not I'm not claiming that I didn't learn shit in school from a uh, academic standpoint. But what it taught me was, again, conflict resolution, uh, having disputes with people, how to resolve it, how to fit in with a group, how to introduce yourself to a new group, the anxiety of having to stand in front of a class and make a public presentation. All of these things school teaches you. And that's the problem now is that the world thinks that we're going to teach our children distance learning from online. How does a child learn any of that shit? The answer is they don't. So the same question applies. How do they learn this if they're being homeschooled? Now, yeah, they got friends in the neighborhood and stuff, but it's a different dynamic. I guess if I had to put it in a word, public school, public school teaches your kid to be tough. In a way, that's a good thing. In a way, it's not. But it teaches them, it teaches them how to be tough. It teaches them how to follow rules and when to break the fucking rules and how when to bend the rules and how society operates, whether you like it or not. So there are some lessons in sending your kid to public school. There are a lot of pros in homeschooling your child these days, especially. 20 years ago, I would have said no. 20 years have passed, I'd say, hell no. Put your kid in public school. Let them get in there and rumble with all the rest of the badass kids in there and learn some fucking life's lessons, okay? Fucking school taught me how to fight. How to fucking uh, not get into a fight. All those life's lessons you're not going to learn with homeschooling. But these days, it's different. These days, we have schools, public schools in America where you have to have, you have to go through a fucking metal detector just to get into school. You have armed guards, you have police officers. Okay, there are so many things that I didn't deal with when I was a kid, you know what I mean? So my perception of sending a, a child to public school is, uh, I say 20 years ago, god damn, let me kick it up a bit, 40 years ago, double that. You old motherfucker. Shit, how the hell did I get to be late 40s? Fucking time just passes you by. 40 years ago, it was a different fucking story. So if we all had to agree on something, probably right now, I mean, we're going to have to make some decisions. These crossroads that everybody's standing at, including me, we have to make some decisions and say that there is probably... Only 1% of the schools in America that I would want to put these babies in. Let's just say that. You would have to go hunt and choose and pick and find this little 
Mayberry, Mayberry Utopia that probably doesn't exist, and you know, probably somewhere so fucking rural that there's ten kids in the class, and then you're you're not concerned about school shootings or the teacher being some extreme fucking liberal that's you know uh, gonna just turn your kid's mind to fucking mush. So if we had to just check something off. I would just have to say public schools in America, not an option. Not an option these days. So for me, yeah, I could put them in, in, a, in a school here and it would be wonderful. I could walk them to school every day and he would have a pleasant childhood in the school, but the academics are not there. Okay, so let me recap. Public schools in America, nope. Public schools here in the Philippines, Okay, if at the minute the child gets home, you're teaching him academics. Okay, so Forrest G could go to school over here and have his normal day and, and learn to interact with people. And then when he gets, gets home, he's got to sit down and go to uh, King Marcos University. But I think the best option is what this gentleman just said. You got to put him in private school if you're going to live here in the Philippines. All right, back to the comments. So... Folks, we're three comments into 800 and something, and we're already just great food for thought, great information, um, and we have people doing different things. People doing different things. All right, living in the bottle. The question is, can you live outside of the bottle? We all have to grow up and live. The only legacy we have is what we can give our children other than things. Forrest G is looking for his daddy. Man, wake up. That's from Rodney. Rodney, thanks for the comment, man. And, and you're right on the money. Okay? What we give our children other than things. Things. In the West, what do we do? We focus on collecting things. Objects. Objects of what we perceive to be wealth. That's what we do in the West. I just spent two months in America. And, you know, I'm an American and I've been away from that mentality for, for so long that I don't give a shit about uh, what I'm living in. Right now, I'm living in a, a beautiful little two-bedroom apartment that's way more room than we really need. It's beautiful. It's a, it's a, it's a, people ask me how much I pay for rent. I pay right at uh, 240. Just say 250 dollars per month is our rent. A couple years ago, we were living in a 28 dollar per month room. Just a little one room place. Check out that video. It's called the 28 dollar beach condo in the Philippines. A lot of you came to my channel because of that video. I don't care about things the way I care I, the way I used to care about things when I was in the rat race in America. And so his comment was it's about to our children it's about what we give them not about the things we give them. So this will go back to the argument what's more important being able to give Forrest G a brand new iPad every year because I'm working 70 hours a week and I only see him maybe an hour every day at, dinner, at supper time or giving him hours per day of my time, love, affection, attention, teaching him things and not being able to give him a brand new iPad every year. Maybe he gets a fucking second hand iPad every five years. What's more important? And I think it comes down to you have to meet, you obviously have to take care of your children's basic needs, okay? They gotta have a roof over their head, food, shelter. The education is important. But living in a McMansion is not important. Um, having a brand new iPad every year is not important. Riding in a Mercedes is not important. Spending time that's what's important because you can't buy more time 
So that's a very good point right there. And it's another point for raising the kids in the Philippines or somewhere like this if you can set the conditions because you have more time with them. Hell, most of you in America, you got an hour commute every day. You're spending two hours in your car. There's so many other jobs out there and things that you can do where you don't have to spend two hours a day in your car. Have, you know, what, 90% of the damn world right now is working from home, working remotely, telecommuting, whatever the hell they're doing. So I think the opportunities, the options are there uh, for you, you know, for anybody to do the same and spend more time with their kids if they want to. Yeah, you may have to give up that Mercedes or give up that McMansion, but good point from Rodney is uh, what we can give our kids other than things. Okay, uh, Mark, it's never too late to turn your life around. Ignore the negative comments and follow your heart. Thank you, Warren. Okay, from Johnny. Never too late to grow up. Getting off the sauce is the first good step. Let's see. Entertainment racket is like fame and fortune. Not all it's cracked up to be. Take care of health and family obligations. First, good luck. Man. You said it. A little bit of fame. I mean, it's been an interesting ride, but, uh, you know, folks, part part of fame, I understand why all those Hollywood uh, celebrities go crazy and do the shit they do. You know, I, you know, I'm this famous in, like, a couple places on the globe, but people want to buy you a beer, right? And I'm a redneck, and I'm not prepared to turn down a free beer. And so, like, when I was living over in Angeles City, running into, you know five or six of you guys every day and you know sitting down drinking a beer and having a conversation by the end of the night fuck I'd, I'd drink 30 beers you know <laughs> anyhow let me get off topic here but yeah um okay this is from michael just my two cents my father was absent for most of my childhood i think the greatest gift you could ever give to force is to just be there for him and the rest should just sort itself out Thank you very much. That goes back to the argument of what's important. Importance is time being present. Okay, now this is from Dirt. Get your family to America first. You can always leave again, but nothing like the USA ever. And then the next comment is don't bring her to the USA. She will upgrade from you, children or not. So see, you got people on both sides of the fence. There's not like one majority on, on one side of it. A man in his 40s cracking a beer at 9 a.m. in Southeast Asia and no one bats an eye. A man in his 40s cracking a beer at 9 a.m. in America, people say, dude, you have a problem. Really enjoyed this channel, but I knew the fun would come to an end when you started to think about those babies seriously. Glad you want to be a good father. Many girls here walk around with foreigner babies and the dad is long gone. Yeah, that's true. But most of the girls here walk, walk, walk around with local babies and the dad is long gone. That's about 99% of them. I'll agree with what you said and we foreign guys, we, we, we take a, a lot of heat in most of the spotlight. When a, when a foreign dude comes over here, pulls a hit and run, and there's a little foreign baby walking around with no father. Well, why? Because he's he's a, he's a local celebrity. He's a superstar. Everybody knows him. So we take a bad rap, but in the grand scheme of things, we're like the foreign children with missing fathers. It's like point zero 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 one percent And... The local babies with missing fathers is 99.999%. Now I'm saying of the babies that are missing fathers, okay? But we as foreign guys, we, we take fucking heat. And you should take some fucking heat, you know? Nobody should abandon their kids. I'm not giving anybody a fucking pass. I'm just saying that uh, we foreigners, if you roll out, certainly you're going to get hated on, and certainly you should. 
But folks realize that all these girls working in bars, well, before these lockdowns, all these girls working in bars, dancing on poles, they're not there because a foreign guy abandoned them. They're there because they've got one or two kids from a local guy. As soon as they got pregnant, he ran off with their cousin. That's why they're in the bars, because they have local children and the father abandoned them. That's reality. So I just want to clear that clear that up. I'm not giving anybody a fucking pass. If you if you abandon your kids, especially as babies, you're a fucking monster. So you're telling us after 10 years as a free spirit, now you're going to move back to America, American suburbia, and be a desk rat. My dream was the six and six until she got pregnant, then re reality bit me in the ass and parenthood crushed my dream. Um, well, that's a good point. You know, after 10 years of, of living outside of the U.S. to go back to that structure, in, in most, of the, most of the things over there, I couldn't do it. I mean, I have to do something I basically have to do something entrepreneurial. Uh, no, man, you're right. There, there's no way I could go back to riding a cubicle at any type of job. I don't care what fucking. I don't care if I ran for the damn governor. I don't think that'd be big enough. Because if I was governor, I'd have to show up, have a schedule, sit in my fucking office. Um. Yeah, I mean, good point, man. All right, go to the next one. Let's see. Go back to your family and the PI. This is from Sid. America is not like it was 10 years ago when you left. Okay, ask for the booze. Letting your liver, letting your liver heal takes three to six months. Or bringing the family to your dad's place. I've been to 40 countries, including the PI. Ask yourself where you are the happiest. And that's a good point too, because with me, folks, home is where, home is where I hang my hat. I don't really have a home anymore. Thailand is the closest thing to, to calling home, but like right now, if I had the ability to pack up both my babies and uh, the old lady, maybe Helen of Troy, Maria's mom, and move right now, we'd all be at the airport. We'd all be at the airport leaving the Philippines um, because there's so many other places in the world to see and explore. And, and maybe you're reading that the wrong way, but my point is, it's wherever you're happy, right? It's wherever you're happy. And for me, home is just where I hang my hat and where my, my, my babies are with me. That's the point of that. It's fucking dogs. Now folks, this is a lesson in itself. Ain't no damn dog catchers around here. You can't call 911 and complain on the neighbor's dogs. You just gotta wait until them fucking dogs shut the hell up. All right, from, uh, let's see, Elmwood Park, online business, best bet. You got a lot of experience living in another country. Offer a coaching service, write an ebook about how to move to the Philippines. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good idea, good suggestion there. And you know what, speaking of that, folks, I've had a lot of people, maybe some of you listen to me, some people uh, email me, you know, offer, you know, to pay for online, one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching because they really want some specific advice to their specific situation and they don't want to sift through all these videos and all these uh, you know they want specific advice about their specific situation and people are willing to pay for it you know people offer you 40 50 bucks an hour just to get on a, spi a Skype call and talk about their situation about exactly where they're thinking about going um, yeah, so that is a valid idea. It's not something I do. It's not something I do right now. I'm pretty much in the same situation. Now, this is from Dirty Dirt. 
I have a five month old daughter there in the Philippines. My decision came down to morals. I don't want her to grow up in the States with that entitled attitude that all of the young generation has. I'd rather her have to earn it and appreciate it more. Also, religion is much more accepted in the Philippines than in the U.S. So all their basic morals such as respect. I guess what I'm trying to say is look at the 18 year old generation as a whole here and the same generation there and decide which you would rather your kids to turn out like. Now man, that is, that's a powerful comment right there. Just take a look. Um, take a look as a whole, but then you, if you narrow it down to certain geographics and certain, uh, uh, you know, like subcultures of the culture, they could go both ways. Because you can look at there at these skinny jean wearing Call of Duty shitheads over in America and say, hell no, I don't want my kid turning out like that. But then you've got other kids that are that are doing doing well. It's the same thing here. You look at some of the kids here, what do they do every night? Get drunk on fucking Red Horse and Kalafu. Go, you know, work. The next day and then blow all their money at night drinking red horse and then you got some kids who are, who are doing well so that's a very good general point to think about how do you want your kid to be when he turns 18 what product and that's the crossroads that we're at we're trying to figure out and again it boils down to, to the specifics of what we're trying to do raise the kid here in the Philippines, he or she goes to private school with, with you know, the local culture teaching him morals and family importance, and then you as a foreign parent teaching him about international business. I'm not saying that certain people here don't understand international business, but I'm talking as a foreign father with Forest G's mother is from a sugarcane field, from a village. She don't know shit about international business. She knows about a sugarcane. I don't know shit about a sugarcane field or how to run a sugarcane plantation. She does. Okay? But I know how to build a fucking spreadsheet and I know about escrow. So you see where I'm getting at. So that's a very good point as well. Alright. Uh, you've got limited time before you take a dirt nap. Yeah, I said that. And that's a good point. It goes back to, especially us guys, like myself, late 40s. This guy over in, in Thailand who lives in Pattaya, he's a, he's a doctor from Australia. He wrote a book called Farang, F-A-R-A-N-G. Thais pronounce it Falang. If you go to Thailand, you're white-skinned, they're going to call you Falang. We're all Falangs, right? Farangs. So he wrote this book, it's called, um, I think it may have part two and three. I know he wrote two, and I think his name is Dr. Ian, I-A-N, I can't remember his last name. But he wrote this book for wrong, and in the book he basically called us, uh, what did he call us? Second time dads. I think he called us second time dads. Well, we. Guys like me, guys like you, late 40s, 50s, retire from the West. You know, and basically, folks, let, let, let's face it. If, if you're older than 35 years old in, in America, unless you're a millionaire, women don't want to talk to your ass. You're fucking useless. <laughs> we're, fucking, we're fucking just thrown away, discarded, right? But when you leave the West, it's not the case. So guys like us, we leave the West, pick a country, Mexico, Central America, South America, Southeast Asia, <clears throat> places where we're not discarded like trash. And we end up starting over with our families. And we get to be second time dads. And it's a totally different dynamic 
on the second go round, I can assure you. We have a lot more knowledge, we have a lot more patience. We've already made these mistakes the first time around. All of a sudden, changing a shitty diaper is no big deal. You don't try to shuck it off on somebody else or, you know, wait, you know, try to try to get your wife to do it. I, shitty diapers to me, folks, I, it ain't nothing. Now, when I was the first time dad, it was a big chore. All of a sudden, I, I can change two shitty diapers in two fucking minutes flat or less. Guaranteed. And it don't stress me out. Crying babies don't stress me out at all. Now that barking fucking dog over there, I don't want to listen to that goddamn barking dog, but when my two babies, if they're in there screaming their heads off, or a baby over there, doesn't even affect my heart rate or blood pressure at all. Just doesn't. Just music to my ears now. It's a different scenario. So we have this expanded knowledge and we have different financial situations than the first time around. What we don't have is time. We don't have the same amount of time that we have uh, to spend with these babies as we did as our first, first, second, third child from back in the West, right? Folks, I'm going to be, by the time Force G and Maria Mercedes graduate high school, I'll be coming up on 60 years old. You go to their graduation, people are going to want to know, you know, who, who's the Lolo? Who's the grandfather? You have drinks? Baby, you know what? I would take a drink. Just Coke over ice would be wonderful. Thank you very much, honey. So we don't have time. Time is much more important and much more critical because of the lack of it. And that plays into our decision-making process. Some of you guys out there listening to my voice, you're, you're 10 years older than me. You just retired, you're 55, 56, 57, just thinking about getting into this expat game. So you got 10 years on me. 10 years coming into this situation as a newbie. Um, so time has to be factored into where we're going to raise the kids. For example, I card everybody up, I do the paperwork, boom, we move to America. Now, yeah, I got family there. Yeah, there's a lot of Filipino folks there. But what happens if I, you know, we buy a house, you know, in three, four years, I come down with fucking, uh, liver failure from all this drinking and boom I kick out right there now I got wife number one my two babies in America you know living in a house by themselves that would be the scenario what do they do hopefully she should be able to carry on but reality most of the time they I don't say most of the time but reality if, if I made it three years and kicked out she would probably just pack up and go back to the village and move home to her family. That's a possibility, unless you set up a different support network. But you gotta understand, my family is aging as well. So, time, the dirt nap, time is not something we have, folks. Most of the folks listen to my voice, we're older, we have younger children. Okay. Just a friendly advice. This is from Edifer. Since you're asking for it, it's better to have your kids study in the Philippines for elementary and high school to learn the culture and a respectful attitude. Afterwards, going to college, you decide or talk to your son or daughter which country they would like to study at, but I think college is better in the USA. I have friends with dual citizenship, Phil Am, so they experience both, and it's a good thing. All right, now here we go. That's, uh, thanks, Edifer. There's another roadmap. So it's like the roadmap we're trying to instill is we want those respectful values, we want those family ties that the Philippines has to offer. 
not saying you can't get it in America, but but the Filipino side of Forrest G's family has that to offer and lock that in to where he realizes family is important. Families stick together. Families live together. It's okay to be around family. Where in the States, our mentality is, you know, once you turn 18, get the hell out of the house. Um, you go see grandma once a, once a year, Christmas time. So we instill that. Then when they have that instilled in them, then you can move to the U.S. to uh, further their education. Any, okay, this is from the man. Mark, anybody with a brain knows not to send your kids to public school in America. It is nothing like it was when we were kids. Uh, the extreme left, alphabet characters and the extreme left have completely taken it over. It is not safe for children nowadays. It warps their brain. All right, thanks for that comment, man. That's that's what we have to keep in perspective, especially for guys like me. 40 years ago, I've got a perspective of sending kids to school 40 years ago, and it's a it's a pipe dream that left 40 years ago. Um, yeah, so so there we go. There's another argument for not sending our kids to public schools in the U.S. Sausage Wizard, Wizard says, Mark, you're forgetting about your wife. Being a Filipina, she may not be able to cope with being away from her family for very long. She'll eventually divorce you and go back to the P.I. Um, all right, this has happened to many guys. Uh, okay, let's, let's acknowledge that, and I talk about this in the King's Chronicles, the second book I wrote. It's been so long since I wrote that book, I can't remember what the hell I talked about and what I did. Maybe I need to go back and read my own books. It's been about 10 years since I've read, I've read them. And maybe I didn't talk about this in, in those books. Maybe it was on blog posts. Okay, a lot of people have that perception. They have that perception that if you bring a girl to America within a year or two, she's going to divorce you and take your money and that she's just trying to get her citizenship, green card, K-1, K-1 K whatever visa to get to America. That's not true, but it is true. It's all It depends on the girl, folks. Most of these girls, they're not... They're not just trying to use us to get to America with a green card. Yeah, there's girls out there that are, that are, that's their game. They don't love you. They're just trying to get there so they can be with family. And the minute they get there, they're moving to their family's place in Chicago and kicking you to the curb. Yeah, there's a possibility. Majority of them, no. That's not the situation. But the longer a girl lives in America and becomes Americanized, then the greater the chance that that you're going to get a divorce or you're going to have marital problems because she's got all these motherfuckers at her work hitting on her. So for example, you move a girl to America, the next day you teach her how to drive a car and get her a driver's license and tell her to go to work uh, at some office, well 10 days later she's got three, four dudes trying to hit on her. What do you think's gonna happen? You know, the normal temptations, you know, guys offering her more, I mean, I'm not saying that that's what she's gonna do, but I'll just tell you, when my Thai, Thai wife moved to America, we had a great relationship. We had a wonderful relationship. We uh, pretty much did our own thing. And, you know, we were living over at the beach at the time, so every night we would go and uh, I'd let her catch crabs because she loved to eat crabs, and I would fish. And, you know, we went out to eat on the weekends. We spent time around my family, and we would go to the temples. So I would make sure that she was around, you know, some other Thai people, going to the temples and, you know, making merit and getting some of her... Uh, well, at the temple, obviously, you get uh, Thai food, but we we found a, a little grocery store that imported all of her stuff and her spices, and we went there once a week. We were spending over 100 bucks a week just on her stuff, on her Thai food and spices. We had a great life. 
had we not left America, we would still be happily married there, no problems. Now, that was just our script. She didn't have to work. She liked staying home. She would cook all day and talk to her family. And, and uh, you know, not that I was locking her down like a hostage or being an asshole. That was just our lifestyle. That She was, she was happy as hell. I was happy as hell. But now flip that to where if I said, okay, you're going to go get a license and you're going to go get a job. Folks, this, this girl is beautiful. She's a 10 out of 10. Beautiful Thai girl. Everybody would have been hitting on her, trying to steal her away. I'm not saying that she would have ever left the king, folks. But I'm just trying to paint a picture that the longer the girl's in America, the more chance you have of that initial relationship and the dynamics of the of the initial relationship going wrong and that becoming uh, a reality that she leaves your ass I've met a lot of Filipinas over there near uh, Camp Lejeune that were divorced they're out in the clubs they're out in the bars they're Filipina Filipino and what's the story I married a Marine, I married a Navy guy, whatever, we got a divorce. And what they all have in common? They were all working at the fucking PX. You know what I mean? <laughs> Dude brings the girl over, marries her, what's he do? Go get a job at the PX, baby. And now every day she's got 200 dudes hitting on her. And, you know, two, three years later, they're fucking divorced. They didn't set the right conditions. If my Thai wife and wanted to get a job for some re get a job for some reason, I'm not a you know I'm not a fucking uh, I wouldn't prevent her from doing that, but I would not have to steer her to get a job at the fucking PX or at the goddamn EM club or whatever the hell they're calling it, fucking job on base that just don't set the right conditions. Let me just say it. So moving right along. Folks, I got off. I got off point there. I got off point. Retired to the Philippines at age 55, with a wife of 24 years and a 14-year-old son. He is doing well in private school here, and I enjoy being able to spend more time with him since I don't have to work. Plan is that after high school, we can go back to the U.S. and send him through a trade school. No one he'll make much more money in the U.S. than in the Philippines, you know, as a plumber, welder, electrician, etc. All right, so that's a different dynamic. Different dynamic with a different objective, clear-cut objective, makes sense, right? A welder, electrician, any type of. Uh, person with a trade skill here in the Philippines not gonna make much money they will make a lot of money over in the US if that's the objective all right let's see uh, I came up with uh, this is par pop par para paras in the Philippines I came up with the best solution for my daughter my wife and daughter live in Batangas along with the rest of the family I live and work in Dubai where I earn the money Okay, uh, I live in an apartment with my sister-in-law and her husband. The world is a much bigger place now with the internet, so when I get home from work, I Zoom calls are fired up and I spend the night with my family. Even, or every school holiday, we head somewhere, like the UK or Ireland as well as Europe. I send my daughter to one of the best schools in Batangas, where she has just graduated top of the class. Now going on to train as a doctor. Both wife and daughter have full Irish passports, so they're not restricted by the Philippines visa restrictions. I'm proud of my family and have done the best that I saw fit. I have my red horse on a weekend and stay dry for the rest of the week. I like, I like my life and my life likes me. Okay, and thank you very much for that comment. All right, now what you're doing is what I went to America to do. Basically, we've got our family here. We're going abroad to work where we can bring home the bacon, where we know that our family here is very well taken care of. 
A lot of you guys do that. And it's a sacrifice. It's noble that you're taking care of your family. It's a sacrifice that you're being away from your family. But as, as I said in that video when I was riding down the road in America, you know, about abandoning my kids. Folks, certain people with certain professions, you have to travel. You have to deploy. You have to work away from your family for extended periods of time. If you're in the military and you get deployed, does it mean that you're abandoning your family? Does it mean that you love your family any less? No, it means that due to your chosen profession, you are having to work in a different geographic location. You're having to make a fucking sacrifice. You gotta go down range, you have to deploy. That's how you support and take care of your family. It's the same with any other job. Uh, take an airline pilot. He's away from home a lot. Take the OFWs here from the Philippines who go to the Middle East and work for a year at a time and come back for two, three weeks to see their family. They're not doing it because they want to be away from their family. They're doing it because that's how they are able to support and take care of their family. I did not want to leave here two months ago. But part of the reason I went to America was to explore a business opportunity that if I got it, I was going to be working away from the crew for a while. I didn't want to do it, but the, but the juice was worth the squeeze. It was worth taking the risk. It was worth the sacrifice for the greater good. I didn't want to do that. But it's one of those things, it's not saying that it's not saying that you or I can be bought. It's not about being bought. It's about the juice worth the squeeze. For example, why do OFWs go abroad and work and leave their families? Well, it's because they can make five or six times in one year what they can make here. So you go sacrifice one year and you could theoretically come back here and live for four or five years on what you made. You're sacrificing your time to try to gain time later. So, anyhow, that model is to work abroad, support your family, and then you don't have to worry about it. They're very well taken care of. I don't want that to be my model, but I was willing to sacrifice and make that my model because the juice was worth the squeeze, if that makes sense. But now, uh, okay, for me, and I think for well, for anybody that does that, right? It has to be. It has to be worth the. It has to be worth it. You know, nobody, nobody is gonna leave their family. I mean, if you can make ten bucks an hour in this city next year, you know, be with your family. You're not gonna fucking move halfway across the country away from your family to make ten bucks an hour. But if somebody said, hey. You want to come over here and work for six months and I'll pay you a hundred bucks an hour. Well, yeah, the juice is worth the fucking squeeze. Hmm. So that's, uh, that's the model there. All right, let me get back, get back here into the next comment. Folks, I'm going to take a couple more and then I'm going to start shutting it down. I thought I was going to get through a lot more comments, but it ain't happening. Let's see, we talked about public schools, best solution. Okay, let's see, uh, somebody says, I was clearly happier in the Philippines. I'm, I'm clearly happier when I'm around my babies. You're absolutely right. I'm happier here, because that's where my babies are. But again, it's back to it's back to what I just said. We we all gonna do what we have to do. But working somewhere else, making a lot of money, is that gonna make me happy? No. But it gives me comfort that 
I have the ability to take care of my family on a higher level. But again, we're weighing what is, what is that level? What does success look like? What is the best option? Is the best option to go deploy to the Middle East somewhere, work a job, make a, make a couple hundred grand a year, and then come back? Now let me tell this story here, and this was from my buddy Art, told me this. Art did uh, multiple tours in Iraq, working uh, contract work. Shout out to you, man, if you're listening to my voice, man. I haven't seen you in years, brother. Hope you're doing well. But I remember the story you, you told me. You said something about you were going to do one more year or six more months, or you, you, were, you were done. You were done with the, doing the contracting route. And, folks, the story he told me was that, okay, he had done two years in Iraq, two or three years in Iraq, and you know you get a couple breaks a year so you get to go on vacation two two week periods per year that's it so you're pretty much absent he had a couple small kids and i guess after his third tour he was back on his two week break or whatever and he was sitting kicked back in his easy chair drinking a beer and the kids were watching tv and so it was getting about time you know 10 o'clock whatever so he told his kids he said he said, hey, y'all go ahead and pick up your toys and uh, turn, turn the TV off. It's time for bed. And so both kids looked back at, the, at, a, at their mother, at his wife, and said, Mom, do we have to listen to this guy? <laughs> and he said, right then, I knew I'd been gone too long. It was time to pull the plug. My kids didn't know me. Wife didn't know me. And so he pulled the plug and, and, and stopped that model. It was time. I'm not judging anybody that's an OFW, if you're deployed, yeah, whether, whether you're contracting work, military, whatever. I've made that sacrifice too. But at some point, at some point you have to balance the money with being present. Or your kids and your wife, they're not going to know you. Alright, moving right along. Yeah, Art, man, I hope you're doing pretty good, brother. I haven't seen you in a long time. All right, now here's one kind of on, on the U.S. side of the fence. I haven't walked a couple miles in your shoes. Just I'd consider bring your family back to the U.S. for so many reasons. Number one, it's the land of opportunity. Number two, better school systems. Number three, uh, way more opportunity to make money. Health care is better here. Not sure where you were brought up, but you didn't turn out that bad, right? Uh, and that's from dual dual field bandit thanks for the comment man that's a good point listen even with all the strife going on in America right now there is opportunity there to make money I assure you I travel 20 something states everywhere you go people are trying to hire you help wanted help wanted and it's not it's it's part of due to the lockdowns and stuff but not totally uh, folks, if you if you want to work and make some money in America, there's money to be made. All these homeless fuckers over in, in L.A., you know, my heart goes out to you. If you're one of those that has some type of mental disability or um, are just temporarily down on your luck in between gigs or whatever you're doing over there, or you're, you got put out of business because of this these stupid-ass lockdowns. The rest of you motherfuckers, you're homeless because you choose to fucking be homeless. That's your choice. You choose to sit there in that fucking tent, in that goddamn Ozark Trail fucking Walmart tent on fucking Hollywood Boulevard underneath the fucking bridge over there on the sunset, wherever the fuck you're at. You choose to live in that motherfucking tent. Yeah, you do. You can't tell me there ain't no fucking work in, in America. How the fuck can we even have unemployment offices when there's so many goddamn jobs available? It may not be the job you, you want to do. It may not be the, the job paying what you want it to pay. But all you motherfuckers living in L.A. stinking up the place, you know, turning L.A. into a fucking uh, uh, the smell of urine and human feces, you're there because you want to be there. You're there because you want to fucking live in that tent. 
there are places, other places than fucking LA that you can get to. Trust me, there's organizations that will help you get a fucking bus ticket to somewhere else. And you can live at the goddamn YMCA or Salvation Army until you get your first check and go out and rent you a fucking room. It's that simple. Yes, the U.S. is still the land of opportunity. You want to start a fucking business? Start a business. Okay, uh, you just want to go get a job? Get a fucking job. They're there. Not so much here. Not so much in places like this. Jobs are, are harder to come by. Starting a business, it, it, it's, not, it's not as easy. So you have a valid point, man. The, uh, the U.S. is still the land of opportunity. I said that in a previous video about you know what I learned after touring America. And that's a factor. That, that is a factor. Now, yes, you can start businesses here. Yes, you can start online businesses. But in America, you, if you got a pickup truck, you can literally put up a few fucking flyers. What, what kind of work you want to do? You want to mow some grass? You got a pickup truck and a fucking uh, lawnmower? You can be mowing grass within a couple days. Write some flyers out and hang them on people's mailboxes. You want to do some tile work? You know how to fucking lay tile? You can have a tile job within fucking a day or two. You don't even have to have a pickup truck. You got a fucking car? With a, put the fucking tile saw in the trunk and go around. You can make money. Here, not on the same level. It's not. It's not on the same level. And yes, America is the is the land of economic opportunity. But again, you're going to sacrifice time for money. Which way you want to go, but folks? I don't know how long I've talked to this, but this this battery has went down to like half. It's got this huge battery on my, my studio camera here. I don't think I've ever run the battery out on this thing. I don't even know if I've ever seen it half halfway down. Maybe I have, but... <sighs> Folks, I'm still at a crossroads. I'm still at a crossroads as to what the exact best course of action is. But I can tell you that for me, the best course of action is being present. Being present as much as possible. I don't want to be away from these babies. It's killing me that I haven't seen my little girl because of these fucking lockdowns. You know, I miss this little boy so much for two months. It was just killing me every night. Um, I don't want to have to do that. I don't want to have to do that. There's other ways to make money um, without going back to the U.S. and getting in the rat race. But again, that's where the money is. So the one thing that I, the one thing that I've deduced out of this is that no matter what path. I take I want to be present I'm gonna teach them skills that they need whether they go to school or not so in my mind the school that they go to is only to teach them the social dynamics of society all of the intellectual things the business end of it I'm gonna teach them right here in this office just like my friend here he left a comment and said his seven-year-old's got a desk right next to his. Man, thank you very much for that comment. Because you are teaching your child business, and it don't matter if you're here, the U.S., fucking ten buck two. You're running a business, he's got his desk right next to yours, he's learning. So it really doesn't matter what he does if he goes to, to school. So I'm just kind of envisioning if I'm staying here in the Philippines, I'll walk a little Force G to school. Let him do his thing, I'll pick him up, and then when he comes home, he's got a couple hours, a couple hours at the King's College. And he'll have to learn everything that, you know, everything that I know and then some. 
send them to, send them to private school, send them to uh, some special courses. But again, this school is just the social dynamic. His learning is going to come here, and the family values are, are going to be here. If I did go back to the States, you know, I would have him around my family as much as possible. Folks, I didn't, I didn't talk so much. I'm going to talk so much, kind of ran my brain around in circles. I think what I, maybe I read, what, 12 comments? When I sat down in this chair, I said, I'm going to read 800 something comments. Made you delusional. Motherfucker, <laughs> you made it through about 12 comments. But folks, I did read all of them. Thank you very much for leaving all that. And if you're thinking about, if you're at the same dilemma, I think it's more important if you go back to that original video and maybe this video and just read the comments instead of taking it from one man's perspective, which is me. That's one-sided. It's a one-sided, one-dimensional perspective. If you read all those comments, you have 800 and something perspectives. 800 and something ideas, pros, cons, positive, negative, and then you can make your own decision. Um, but again, I know a bunch of people, you're in my same, you're listening to my voice, you're, you're abroad, your kids are here, you're missing the hell out of them, but you gotta make that money. But it's sometimes that it's got to be a balance between the money and the time. Or your kids would be like arts kids and mom, that we got to listen to this guy. I don't want that to happen, folks. If you're not a subscriber, hey, I've talked enough. Bottom right hand corner of your screen, hit that overstay road sign. Get on board my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I'll see you guys on the next video, my friends. Peace out. Thanks for joining me.